Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and you can tell that we are here in the perennial greenhouse. I have got lots of fun plants that are really starting to wake up from their winter dormancy that I want to show you. But before we do that, um, I'll just go ahead and give you just a little bit of a, uh, get you caught up on some things that are happening here at the nursery. I know that it seems like the whole country right now is experiencing some type of not very pleasant weather. And here in North Carolina, we've had a lot of people ask what the weather's like for us here. We have had just tons and tons of rain. We are in the Piedmont of North Carolina, just west of Charlotte. So we have just gotten tons of rain and it's been really cold, but not too cold that we're having any kind of like snow or freezing rain. So praise the Lord, we do not have that. But it has been like yesterday we were working potting up some plants and we were working in the barn and it, I think the high yesterday was like 34 and rain and it was just about one of the most miserable days of us working but then last night I was all snuggled up on the couch and was just kind of scrolling through social media and I saw that some of our dear friends they live um, in Waco Texas and they are in the midst of getting hit with some horrible weather so we're very grateful that we're not experiencing lows of three degrees, nine degrees, like what they are going to be experiencing. So it's just really, really wet and everything is just saturated. So some of these videos that are going to be coming to you this week will be indoors. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of landscaping or putting, you know, working outside a lot this week. If we are, it'll be definitely little pockets between rainstorms because it is just a constant cold, dreary rain. But with that said, they're calling for some sunshine and a little bit of warmer temperatures coming this weekend. I think starting on Friday and then into Saturday. So we are going to go ahead and open the nursery for this Saturday. We're going to begin hours of operation Saturday only for right now. Um, we'll open at 9. I don't really know what time we're going to close. We haven't really talked about that. 3 or 4, 3, 4, 5. We'll just kind of We'll let you know on that. Um, but I know a lot of you have been excited about coming to visit the nursery. So I want to kind of preface this that we are opening, but it is still obviously we're smack dab here in the middle of February. And this is the reason that we're opening is because we have a lot of people who want to go ahead and get some shrubs and perennials and trees for their landscape. They want to get it in the ground before really spring hits and those warm temperatures kind of hit because I don't know about it for y'all but for North Carolina it's like one day it's this cool lovely spring and then the next day it's like blazing hot so the better to you know the earlier you can to get those perennials and shrubs in the ground before the heat hits the better so we're opening for those people we have got of course tons of supplies for your landscape whether it's you know fertilizers or garden soil or compost or you know earthworm castings we have all of that. This is a great time to start putting that out in your yard. Also, we have aquapots still. We've got a nice, nice big selection of aquapots. So we have folks that are wanting to get those. Of course, you can come pick those up. Um, we are strongly encouraging you sweet folks. This is not the time for you to buy your annuals. The only exception that we could possibly think of is if you have a heated greenhouse where you are and you want to go ahead and get some of those annuals, you can. But for the vast majority of the population, this is not the time to be coming and buying your, your, you know, your annual grasses or your supertunias or, you know, whatever those things may be that you're excited about. We've got to hold on just a little bit longer. The plants next door are growing beautifully and doing great but the weather outside needs to catch up. So you just need to hang on. And a lot of people ask for us, when do we start putting annuals out? Again, it really depends on the weather, but I like to put my petunias in the ground, really kind of beginning the first of April, first to middle of April, because I find that they can get established before the heat hits. So if that gives you an idea of a timeline, then that will hopefully help you some. But for you local folks who are looking for shrubs, perennials, you know, supplies, all that kind of stuff, you can come see us this Saturday. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And later on in the week, we're going to go do a tour of, you know, the barn and show you all the supplies that we have that are ready for you. We've got lots of great things to help you have a gorgeous, healthy garden this coming spring and summer and in the future. 
So what we're going to do now is really just kind of go through here and show you these great perennials that are starting to wake up. And one of my first ones that when I walked into the nursery is this spot on pulmonaria. It is a proven winners and it is beautiful if I can get it out. Now remember these were out in the pines so they still have some pine needles on them. Let me show you that picture first. Again, if you need more information, go to provenwinners.com, tag the name in there, and it'll show you all the information. Why do we love spot on pulmonaria? Well, there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little dirt in my throat. So pulmonaria pairs beautifully with hostas and astilbes and all of your shade loving perennials. It has that beautiful variegated foliage. And then of course in the springtime, it has these beautiful blooms. They start out pink and then they turn that really shade, pretty shade of purple and blue. Obviously, remember this is still a little a baby. She is in a nice gallon container. She does have her roots coming out, but as she grows, more foliage will develop and turns into this lovely big clump. They're pretty kind of short, that, that, that you know foot high, but they're gorgeous and you cannot beat those beautiful, sweet little blooms on there. Now, another shade perennial that you might be interested in and this is new this year again another proven winners this is heaven scent and this was one that let me move the tag here for you that helps a little bit clean it up heaven scent again is a lovely shade perennial we are here in zone 7b right on the border of it getting a little too hot but look at that fine foliage. It looks very much like a fern to me. Very nice, soft texture. This is brand new, so let me look at it. So Heaven Scent is just a great perennial. Pairs beautifully with, of course, those hostas, those ferns, the brunaria, any of those things that you have. I love the foliage. If you can really see, it has that green with kind of that purple edging to it. Um, it's just a beautiful plant. It is hardy in zones three through seven, so it's extremely cold tolerant. Again, like I said, for us here in the southern regions, you will definitely need, if it gets any sun, it could have morning sun, but no afternoon sun. And you definitely need to keep it well watered once you get into those hotter months in the summer. So July and August, you need to make sure that it stays well watered. But it's a beautiful plant, absolutely fantastic. Moving on down, this is a brand new one this year. So Proven Winners has two new phloxes. This is Opalescence. This is one of, I'm really excited about it. They sent it to us last year to test out. It was late in the summer when they sent it to us. Now again, it's just now coming out of dormancy, but this is a tall garden phlox and it does these beautiful blooms just like this. It's very nice, light pink, but what was so fun about this plant, one, it's gorgeous. You're going to love it. And of course, Phlox likes it, you know, the sun because so that way it doesn't get powdery mildew, so forth and so on. But it is a sun plant. I went and grabbed one of these because I was giving it to a sweet customer of ours. Um, and I picked it up and it was over there at the production greenhouse and I was bringing it down. I was like, man, the gardenias are really smelling great today because I was driving by the gardenias. And then I got down here and I was like, that is not gardenias. That is this phlox. It has the most heavenly scent. It is very reminiscent of a gardenia, a jasmine. It's fantastic. Of course, every year your mound just gets bigger and you just get more and more blooms on it. This is a fantastic one. It is gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. Just those beautiful light pink with the dark eyes. And if pink is not your jam and you wanna go a little more, you know, bold in your life, then this is ultraviolet so ultraviolet is part of that series also that tall garden phlox it is still going to be in a zone i'm reading it upside down three to eight just a beautiful one look at that pretty foliage on it and again you can see um, i'm going to turn a little bit so see look how here you're getting new foliage coming up down here so every year your mound just gets bigger um, just makes a beautiful statement in your garden really excited about those and then of course you know you can't go wrong with lavender this is proven winners sweet romance lavender i mean you ha whenever you walk by lavender of course you have to rub it it's kind of like rosemary because so much of the the joy in these flowers 
is also their smell when they smell, when they have a smell, but a good smell. You don't want a stinky smell. We don't allow stinky smells here. Then another salvia, or another perennial rather, that I'm really excited about is this crystal blue salvia. And you can see that being here in the greenhouse, that it is already starting to get some buds on it. This is crystal blue, and it truly does have those true blue icy flowers on it. It is again going to be hardy in zones three to eight. So if you are in these nice hot southern climates, if you can get a little bit of that afternoon shade, that would be great. Since this is a perennial salvia, it will bloom early to mid spring, just like this, these gorgeous spikes on it. If you trim it back, then that encourages it to rebloom again, as opposed to like to an annual salvia that just keeps on like your rockin' series. Those just keep on and keep on. This one is a, is a perennial, so you'll need to trim it back a little bit and then it encourages new blooms. But again, salvias are deer resistant because they are part of that mint family. And so they have kind of an herbaceous minty smell to them and they're kind of a rough texture. So deer do not like that. So if you do have deer problems, the perennial salvias are a great way to go. And of course we have these in all sorts of gorgeous colors. So that was the crystal spires. Then we also have, this is so fun, back to the fuchsia. I tell you, those proven winter folks, they have some fun names that they give their plants. So back to the fuchsia, and you can tell it's a nice, gonna be a nice fuchsia pink. No buds on this one yet, but just beautiful foliage. It's just such a nice plant. You know, it's gonna be like two feet tall when you have your flowers on there. Again, that zones three to eight. So perennial salvias are a great addition to put in your yard. They are um, really low maintenance. Bugs don't like them. Um, super easy. Now this is one too that I love. Azure snow. Again, a nice crystal blue color on it. Same kind of, all of these kind of series, the plants in the series, they have the same characteristics, different colors. So depending on what color palette or what you need to add into your yard, then these are great. These do great in containers and in the landscape. So just as an FYI, and you might hear we have the, the heater on because like I said, it is chilly and um, sweet hubby said, I'll, I'll turn the heat on for you so you don't freeze today. So that's always nice. So if you hear something running, that's probably what it is. Now, one of my all time favorite perennials is the black pearl euchre. If you don't have euchras in your life, then you need to add some. These do great in the landscape and in containers. Black Pearl is really unique in that it can do sun or shade. Um, depending on what your light is, it will either be a nice black color or it'll have a little bit of a purple hue to it. This is really neat. I know because a lot of times us Southerners have a hard time with Eucharist. Sometimes they just kind of peter out and they don't survive year to year. A lot of that is because of our heat and humidity. The Velosa series is a species of Euchra. So the Velosa, V-I-L-L-O-S-A, Google it. It is a native Euchra to the Southeast United States. So it handles our heat and humidity much better than other Eucharas. Black Pearl is part of that. And we also have multiple other Eucharas that are part of that Velosa series. So when we were, or species rather, not a series, species. When we were placing our plant order back at the end of the summer, I specifically was looking for those Velosa type plants so that they would do well in our gardens. So as if we come across them, I will try to point out that these are Velosas so that if you are in the Southeast or the South where it's hot and humid, these work great. Um, I love putting them in containers as a bright, you know, a nice color contrast to something that's like lime green. I mean, this would be gorgeous. Look, black pearl with one of those salvias because you have the dark of the black pearl with it's a nice mounded habit. And then you've got the salvias or the nice green and then the flower blooms that are an upright. So this would be really, really pretty together. So these black pearls are so versatile because they can do sun or shade, container or landscape. And they are semi evergreen. So meaning even in the winter time, like right now, there's foliage out there so they don't completely disappear like a hosta, 
but just know it's not going to be like in primo shape. Um, so we'll stick those guys back in there. And then let's see. Well, I showed you a while ago when they first came in, one of my favorite, let's see, one of my favorite foliage perennials is Ascot Rainbow. This is a type of spurge and this is a glorious perennial. It's mostly grown for the foliage. It will bloom, but it's, it's not the traditional bloom that you think or the flower that you think. It gets nice and tall. It's extremely soft. It's got that gorgeous variegated foliage on it. It's really an exquisite plant. So last time I showed you this, some people were like, I can't believe you actually handled that because you know, spurge can be toxic to you. Okay, if you take a spurge and you break it, it will have a milky white liquid substance sap that comes out of it. It can be a skin irritant. Now, by just touching it, you're fine. No big deal, it's okay. Now, if I were to break it and like rub it all over my face or my skin, then yeah. And of course, different people are gonna have different reactions. So just know, try to avoid the milky sap. So if you do need to trim it, it probably would be best to go ahead and put on some gloves, um, but you're, you know, the roots are not gonna affect you touching it. I mean, I, I touch mine all the time because it's so soft and it has this really unique earthy scent to it. So you're fine. Just know if you're going to trim it, put some gloves on, you'll be fine. Wash your hands afterwards. No big deal. It's kind of like, um, what is it? Like Fox gloves. That's a digitalis. And so that can be found also in heart medication, unless you make a, you know, a habit of going out there and eating your plants, you know, yeah, the root, Jerry said, then you'll be fine. So if it says, you know, just be smart people, common sense, you're good, you're all good. Now this one is coming up very nicely. This is the cat's pajamas, Nepeta. This was planted, I don't think this was green at all, was it? I think this was a complete bare root. So again, we've got some lovely growth coming out on it. These are in trade gallons. So there is a little bit of a difference. This is the cat's pajamas. It is again, it's a type of cat mint. So I, we did have somebody ask, you know, I have a cat problem, you know, could I plant this? Probably not because, you know, this would be like crack for cats. They love the smell of it. They just go nuts over it. So if you already have a cat problem, you probably don't want to put this out there because they'll just love you even more and keep coming around. Very drought tolerant. Again, has a nice minty herbaceous smell to it great does beautiful flowers loves the sun um 12 you know 12 inches tall and this is the perennial of the year for proven winners so there you go they are coming out lovely um let's see what else shall we talk about oh speaking of coming out of dormancy let's see here we have some hosta foliage coming up. This is golden tiara. You know, there's about as many hostas in the world as there are stars in the sky. So this happens to be golden tiara. It's a non-branded material, meaning that it's not associated with a, you know, like a, a plant brand name, like Proven Winters. This is a great one because it's kind of on the petite side. It's only 15 inches tall and it has that beautiful variegated foliage. But I just love when the hostas start coming up out of the ground. Like whether it's in the greenhouse or out in your landscape, because especially in the landscape, when you see hostas coming up, you know that spring is just around the corner. So we don't have any hostas coming up outside yet, but seeing it in the greenhouse still does really evoke those same feelings. So again, hostas, if you have shade or you have morning sun and then you have afternoon shade, hostas are great for that. You know, in our shade garden, the video that we did multiple times last year, we did tours going through there it's like if you like a hosta just get get them of different shapes different sizes some are very like vase like where they go straight up and then come out some are low and mounted some have huge leaves some have little teeny tiny leaves so you could have just a hosta bed just a flower bed of nothing but hostas different shapes textures and colors and it's stunning so don't think, oh, well, I only have shade and I can't have a beautiful garden. No, yes, you can. You just kind of have to switch your brain just a little bit and think a little bit differently. So I love a good shade garden. I think they are gorgeous. And then speaking of, come on down here. We were talking about 
Um, we did this, we showed you these two plants when we did a nursery tour. It was only like, what, a week, two weeks ago, I think? It wasn't that long ago when we planted these. So let me show you. This is wild berry. It's a proven winner's one. And then this is gumdrop. So these are both part of the Dolce series, but I wanna show you, put them together from a distance. Can you see the difference in the color? So silver gumdrop, wild berry. And they both have that hint of purple to them, but the silver gumdrop definitely has that silver overlay. And I'm pretty sure that both of these are part of that Velosa series, species. Why do I keep saying series? Species of plants. So then again, that is why we got these for our region. They will do great, again, landscape, containers, um, you name it, you can put it there pretty much. Now, those are going to be, the wild berry is going to be sun or shade. The gumdrop is going to be more of your shade garden. So it is not really that of the sun. Heat kicks on. Now, we just got these not that long ago. This is Proven Winners Queen of Hearts. Brunnera, Brunaria, Tomato, Tomato. Depends on how you say it. This is a great shade foliage plant. It pairs beautifully with those hostas. It is deer resistant because I don't know if you can see with this camera, it has little hairs all over it. So it is a hairy leaf to it, has a lot of texture. Deer don't really like it because it's kind of rough on their tongue, but it's this beautiful silver and green leaf. They do these gorgeous little tea tiny spikes of true blue flowers positively exquisite now again this is a little baby plug they will get nice and big as the years go on in the winter they do die back but i have found that it's a you have to have a really hard hard freeze to kill it back so in our shade garden everything else was gone the hostas the astilbes ferns everything was gone but my brunaria still looked really good so i left it it's now since the foliage has all died but it comes back every year just bigger and prettier every year very much like your hostas do so this is a great one again that shade garden not really tall but nice and wide and fat really nice let's see what else do we have in here um the daisies are coming up pretty good the um What's the stuff called? Baptiza is just starting to show a little bit of life coming along. Grasses are coming up just nicely. This is blue whiskers. I love blue whiskers. It is a fescue grass. Um, nice and petite. You can tell how it got its name. It likes it nice and sunny and on the dry side. I planted this in our cottage garden. It got way too wet and it did not survive. So it really likes to be on the dry side. So if you have a sunny dry spot, this would be a great one. And it just brings a beautiful blue green pop of color to your space, nice and short. So it'd be great. It's an edging in the border or even in a container. You could use that that way too. Um, I think, oh no, oh goodness. I got so dis distracted looking at these plants that I forgot about these plants over here. So this is a new one for us because my dear sweet mama, Mimi, you've seen her on some of the videos. Um, they live just really close to us, but she lives under pine trees. So she has dry shade. So where I'm mostly like full hot sun, she's dry shade. So when I'm ordering plants and looking at things, I also think not what would work in, well in my garden, but what would work for Mimi. And so this is one that we came across from Walter's Gardens. This is Banana Boat. Banana Boat is a perennial grass. It is a Carex, I believe. Yes, it's a Carex type of sedge. Pretty sure. Um, I've been doing research on this and it is gonna be a part shade to full shade, meaning morning sun, but afternoon shade. In the winter, it completely goes away, but look at this new gorgeous foliage that is starting to emerge. It is this electric lime green with this dark green edging on it. Banana boat is gonna be only six to 12 inches tall. 
and hardy in zones five to nine. It will do a little bloom late in the spring. And of course you can pair it with your hostas, your ferns, your brunaria, just, it just, and it slowly creeps into a dense, nice mound. So if you leave it there for a couple of years, it just gets nice and big and spreads. Of course, if you want to divide it after a couple of years, you could do just like a hosta where you split it down in the fall, cut it in half and you can divide it out this way. But I am super excited about this. When I showed my mama, she loved it. So this is a really neat one, Banana Boat. I have a special um, project that I'm gonna be doing with shade perennials and I need a pop of color. So I think this is gonna be the pop of color that is gonna go into that container that we'll show you in a couple of weeks. Um, I think that is it for right now. Um, the rain continues to fall for all of you, whether you're getting pounded by snow or really brutal cold temperatures, or maybe you're just like us and you're about to get washed away. Hang in there, I promise spring will come. The spring always comes, um, but it's one of those last times that you're just like, oh Lord, can we just please have some bright sunny days? They're coming, we just have to be patient. Again, great time for you to be planting your garden. Plan out your containers, plan out your flower beds. What changes do you want to make? Dreaming of your garden that is to come is one of my most favorite parts about gardening. And we're here to help you go every step of the way. Um, there is so much more to come. This week, we will be focusing on indoor activities since we have the rain, but we will, um, I guess, see some of you sweet folks on Saturday. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.